the AMD Ryzen 7 8700G is an amazing product. However, it's not something anyone would rush out to purchase given the specs and the price. So in this video, I'll share with you my findings of the Ryzen 7 8700G. Now let's talk about how great it is. From my test, the CPU scored 16,783 points on Cinebench R33 multi-core workload on a single run uh, using a 6400 CL32 memory and the score remains at this is even when I use a low-end motherboard with a low-profile cooler. And we'll talk about this in another episode. Graphics performance-wise, it's amazing considering an APU now has onboard graphics that's very close to a GTX 1650 or AMD side, it should be an RX 6400. And this is using my best available setup. It is also incredibly cost inefficient in this setup and I tell you why. Now my setup is using a PNY DDR5 6400 MTS CL32 memory and the motherboard is an Aorus B650 Elite AX Ice. Now these are expensive stuff and knowing that a lowly GTX 1650 graphics card with Intel Core i3 CPU with the cheapest motherboard and probably just a single stick of low speed memory still outperforms it on average 13% or faster. The AMD build comes with much more up-to-date components, however, it is at about 60% extra cost and still loses out on the performance. When paired with weaker memory for the setup, the performance gap widens and with my weakest memory kit available, the performance alone drops some 22% and widens the gap to the GTX 1650 by some 30%. So while the AMD Ryzen 7 8700G is a great product, the total cost of setup, meaning the CPU, memory, and motherboard combined, is cost ineffective and not something anyone would likely to go for. If one needs just the CPU and the processing power, that's the Ryzen 7 7700. And if the CPU power is the processing power from the CPU side is not what you need and you just want the graphics performance, that's a cost effective Core i3 or whatever Ryzen baseline CPU paired with the GTX 1650 or an AMD RX 6400, it will still obliterate the performance of the Ryzen 7 8700G. So this product is suited to, at least what I think, are two very tiny niche of people. The first one being someone who so happened to actually need that CPU processing power and also the graphics performance, so you get all in one. You don't need the, I feel the GTX 5650 level and you still want the Ryzen 7700-ish performance level. So yeah, this kind of, this uh, Ryzen 7 8700G suits you. And then there's the other type of people who happen to be wanting all this in a tiny package. So if you're willing to pay, especially for the graphics performance, to be packed into a tiny package, small form factor setup, then the Ryzen 7 8700G is. After all, at that price point, uh, 7700 and the 8700G, similar CPU performance, but you get much greater uh, graphics performance out of that. But that is just talking about the graphics performance. The 7700 has its own advantage, especially like I said, if you totally disregard the, C, uh, the GPU power and you are focused on the CPU side, then that's the 7700. The one last thing I am very disappointed with this 8700G is not from the 8700G itself, but it is from the AMD Adrenaline software. Now, I was an, a user of this Ryzen 5, uh, this uh, 5600G. It is a nice APU. I've used it to play games like Genshin Impact. I actually enjoy it. It's not the fastest, but it's good performing enough for me to just do my uh, tasks, you know, the daily quests and all that. However, AMD Adrenaline does not allow game recording on that one and I couldn't even record the desktop so I want to make any guides whether it's game or desktop related you know browser recording I cannot get it done. So the 8700G is a, I thought it was a, a, the limitation of the hardware but with the 8700G with the new RDNA and everything I cannot believe that I still couldn't do these basic things like game recording and desktop recording. It's absolutely disappointing when you're considering the total cost of ownership and even a, an Intel's older Intel, whichever Intel you're talking about, even entry level, as long as it's the HD graphics, 
I can record the screen. At least I can use Windows Game Bar to record. On this uh, Ryzen, from my 5600G, and now the 80, 80 watts to ever G on the 8000 series uh, APU, I still cannot do any form of recording. And yes, Xbox, this Windows Game Bar is still not working. So I'm utterly disappointed in this. Overall, I still think that this product is a great product. However, like in the end, I guess I'm pretty much repeating myself. The specs, the price, it is something that caters to a really niche. When I say niche, it's really tiny niche of people who are willing to pay for these things that it offers. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video. Do remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And bye-bye.